All right. Hi, everybody. It's our CFB Talk 106. It's the same day as our earlier one. So we're going to have an afternoon discussion, this time with Cody Campbell, Texas Tech Regent, donor, former player. I'm going to be joined. It's myself, Bob Akhairi. I'm going to be joined by my co-host, J.D. Moore. I can see our guest is in the audience. So just to let you all know, our guest, Cody Campbell, is co-CEO of Double Point Energy and co-founder of Double Eagle Energy Holdings. He was a four-year letterman on the offensive line for the Red Raiders from 2001 to 2004, earning multiple All-Big 12 and academic All-Big 12 honors. In fact, his tenure briefly overlapped with Cliff Kingsbury. He spent a couple of seasons with the Indianapolis Colts after his college career and graduated with honors from Texas Tech University with a pair of bachelor's degrees in finance and economics, as well as a master's degree in finance. He's a fourth generation Red Raider coming from a long line of Texas Tech graduates, including both of his parents, his grandmother and his great grandfather, who was a member of Texas Tech's first class in 1925-26. J.D., have you made it up? Yes, I have made it up. I'm very excited to be talking with Regent Campbell today. And, you know, Regent Campbell, we really appreciate the time to speak with you. First and foremost, I mean, Texas Tech has a major rivalry game coming up this weekend in Fort Worth, where you, your family, and your business are all based. How excited are you for this matchup for the Battle for the Saddle, the West Texas Championship? Yeah, it's a it's a fun weekend here. Uh, a ton of people are in town. And, um, you know, we're going to have a big tailgate tomorrow. And be great to see people. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a good game. So, Regent Campbell, you know, you wear a lot of hats around Texas Tech. Regent, donor, letterman, alumni, co-founder of the Matador Club, and several more titles. What made you decide to be so committed to the university as a professional? Well, you know, you mentioned my family history at Tech. It's, it's a very meaningful place to me, and that community is important to me. And so, you know, I know the impact that it has on West Texas, and, and I just want to help any way that I can. Um, you know, I, I can trace a lot of my success back to the things I learned, the people I met at Tech and uh, the things I did. And I just love the place. And so I want to help any way that I can. I know one of the ways that you were able to help very recently was that $25 million investment in the South End Zone renovation. What is that renovation looking like? And what made you say, you know what, I'm going to be the lead contributor on this? Yeah, so it's, it's the South End Zone complex plus a new football training facility. And, you know, it, it, what, I, what we all saw at Tech was that those facilities were, uh, are, are necessary to take the next step in our program. And so we toured the country, went to all the best facilities. And what we decided was we were going to, you know, endeavor to uh, build something that would be on par with, with any, you know, with the Clemsons, with the Georges, with, you know, with every, Texas A&M, all the, all the places that have great facilities. And so we, <clears throat> we got um, some help with planning, with architecture, and, you know, came up with a budget. And figured out that, you know, we thought we could get the money put together for it. And, you know, my donation and others helped us get it there. But, you know, right now we're going with a it's a two hundred million dollar project. It starts um, as soon as as soon as uh, uh, the game is over against Oklahoma, our last game at home, um, the old south end zone is being torn down <clears throat> and we'll start construction. But once it's done, the thing, I'm, you know, the south end zone complex will be cool. The suites are going to be beautiful and it's going to be aesthetically you know, look great on the field. But the thing I'm most excited about is the football training facility. It's going to be the largest football training facility in the country um, from a functionality and quality standpoint. It'll be as good as anything out there. We'll have the best facilities in the conference for sure and probably top five in the country. And so, you know, I, I think it'll be a game changer for tech and, you know, help us to take the next steps in our program. So when you say that it's going to be the largest facility, I'm sure that's going to be a little bit of top of the line equipment. That's going to be top designers. What are some of the details that we have in what we know it's going to go in there? Has a designer been selected? Yeah, we're working with a group called Populous. And, you know, they, they most recently did the, the renovations at UT um, to their south end zone. And they've done stuff all over the country. Um, you know, we're, they're one of the top two or three firms. So we've been working with them for a long time. Um, it's going to have all the things you expect, you know, weight room coaches' offices, um, locker rooms, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, a lot of innovative, um, you know, just functionality things that you wouldn't even think about that are fairly detailed. But this, the facility is going to work great. And obviously it's a big recruiting tool and it has to have kind of that, that um, you know, shock and awe factor when people walk into it. And it'll certainly have that. Uh, it's going to be an extremely uh, impressive facility and it'll function very well for the team on a day-to-day basis. How much of your own background as a player, and not all that long ago, goes into – your thoughts on what should be added and what would benefit the team in these new facilities? You know, that is interesting because, you know, and there were a couple of former players that were involved in the design process, but unless you have, you know, 
done it every day and gone to practice and, you know, gotten taped and gotten ready and got, you know, gotten ready for a game, all those sorts of things, you don't really have perspective or a way to understand why these certain things are important. And so what I think we ended up with was a facility that's very functional. You know, our athletic director played at Kansas State. He gets it. Um, we had a lot of people involved that just understand what the players do and go through every day. And so I think, again, from a functionality standpoint, uh, this one's going to work better than anything that I've seen. When you mentioned those things, when you as a player are able to see some of the different functionalities, what would be like some of those minor things that a non-player might not recognize or appreciate that you're able to step in and go, hey, this is super helpful for when we're getting taped up, when we're doing logistics, anything else like that? Yeah, you just think about how the flow of getting ready for practice goes, just for an example. So, all right, you get dressed here in the locker room and then you got to go get taped and then you don't want to have to walk clear across the facility to get taped and then walk back to your locker to put your shoes on and then go and go out the field. So you want everything just to flow and because you don't want to wait a lot of wasted time. Same thing with the meeting facilities. You know, how many steps is, that, is everybody taking to get where they need to go? And that's just all a function of time and efficiency. And so those are the things that we thought through, you know, in a weight room, what do you want in a weight room? You know, how do they train? Um, you know, what equipment do they need to have? You know, they need to have access to the outdoor space so that they can integrate indoor and outdoor exercises in one workout, things like that, that I think that, you know, a lot of people don't don't take into account, but a lot of people don't have the luxury of building an all new facility and doing things they want to do it. So, you know, when we originally thought about it, we were going to renovate the existing FTF. And after a couple months of working through that, we decided, man, we just need to tear it down and, um, and start all over so we can get exactly what we want. Same thing with the equipment room, you know, how the players get their equipment, how they get their laundry, how they, you know, all those sorts of things, how they turn it in at the end of the day. All those sorts of things have to be thought through um, because a lot of people work and operate and are doing things all day long in those facilities. And so it really has to be functional. It has to be a recruiting tool. It has to look good. It has to be pretty, but it really needs to function properly. And so that's been a big focus with this one. When you have a massive capital investment and campaign like this, there's a lot of people that got to be involved. Athletic directors, university leadership, regents, facilities folks. How did this deal come about? Was this something that, you know, Kirby Hokut puts in a phone call and says, hey, I've got an idea. Is this something that you came and said, hey, how do we help out? How did this deal end up forming together? Well, it's something that we've been talking about for a really long time. And, um, you know, whenever, in fact, I would say it goes back to whenever, like, Tommy Tuberville was our coach and uh, as far back as that. And people just weren't that excited about the program for a few years. And so we struggled to get, um, get momentum to raise money for it. Originally it was just going to be the FDF, the football training facility first. We were just going to renovate. It It was going to be a much smaller project. Um, And then a guy named Dusty Womble, who's a a fellow regent and has been a huge donor and supporter of tech athletics, great guy. He stepped up and made the um, original donation to sort of get the FTF renovation going $20 million dollars. And um, so right on the heels of that, um, we had other people express interest in wanting to help. Um, I made a donation. My business partner, John Sellers, made a donation, a number of other people. And so it came to be apparent that we actually had the fundraising momentum to do a much larger project. We could go ahead and do the South End Zone Complex and do the FTF and not just renovate the FTF, but build an entirely new one and not just build a, you know, a a new one, but build a great new one and one that's that's going to be top in the country. And so. Um, that's what we did. And um, really, it just was very organic, but came from overall excitement in the program. I mean, people are actually believing in what's going on there. Love Coach McGuire. I love what he's doing. You know, we feel like we have a very bright future. And so I think everyone realized that, you know, we need to invest in the program to, you know, help the efforts that are being made um, inside the walls of the facility right now. And just, you know, it's just something we had to do if we're going to step up and, um, and, uh, and compete. And then I, I think that, you know, last summer when the, the conference realignment stuff started shaking up, a lot of people, um, you know, higher up in the university realized, you know, hey, this is important. Like this is, ex- you know, our, our being a part of a Power Five conference and, and having a football program that gives us visibility is existentially important to the university. And so, you know, we need to support this project to make sure that we have a good football team and basketball team and baseball team and everything else. And so um, attitude shifted a little bit. And we just got really serious about making investments and supporting the program the way that we needed to support it. And, and so, you know, here we are now and um, just couldn't be more excited about what's going on at Texas Tech. New head coach Joy McGuire has brought a lot of energy and excitement to Texas Tech. He's 4-1 at home this year. He's got two ranked upsets in Lubbock, including that one of the Longhorns. How have you felt about Coach McGuire's performance so far? I love the guy and I love what he's doing. 
you know, I don't, I still don't know how the season's going to turn out. Um, you know, I knew, I knew it was going to be a tough one because we have some holes right now from a personnel standpoint, um, you know, and, and he's got to build the program the right way. So we kind of got off of our bread and butter, which is recruiting and developing high school athletes. He's back there. He's recruiting high schools in Texas at a very, very high level now. And he is building the program. He's, he's not just, you know, trying to get individual players to come in and transfer in and make a big impact in year one. He's actually developing guys in the long term, developing them as men, you know, developing relationships with them, um, you know, showing that he cares about them, helping them understand why we're doing the things that they, the way that we do. He calls it the brand, you know, that we're going to be the toughest, hardest working football program in America. And that's what he's building. And that ties in with the whole, you know, West Texas ethos. Um, you know, it's tough people out there. It's hardworking people. And, you know, when Texas Tech has had the best teams in the past, it has been built from high school recruits that, you know, a lot of times redshirt, stay in the program, develop themselves, and end up just outworking and out toughing the other teams. And that's, that's when we've been competitive. And that's what we saw during the Leach era out there, you know, and we had a lot of success. And, and I think Joey's well positioned to, um, to get back to those levels. And so, you know, I just thrilled about what's going on this year. You know, the hope is that we win a couple more games, go to a bowl game, you know, and just continue building what he's building. But long term, I'm very optimistic about the future. Yeah, we were fortunate enough to have a nice discussion with Coach McGuire on the show a few months ago. And one of the things that struck us was his character and that West Texas tough that he was talking about. What sort of role did you play at all in hiring him? I was on the hiring committee and um, it, it was our athletic director, Kirby, um, uh, Dusty Wumble, um, and Sammy Morris, who's a former player and on the staff, and Tony Gonzalez, who's assistant AD, and me. And we, we traveled around, interviewed people. Um, you know, we had a national search. A lot of people interested in the job because, you know, we have an ability to pay and we have a, um, you know, we have a place where it's been proven you can have success. And so um, it was a fascinating process. I mean, you know, anybody who's in a position to interview for a Power 5 football job is an impressive person, a smart person, an interesting person. And so having the opportunity to talk to all those people and learn more about them, it was really fascinating. But when we met Joey, he had a plan. You know, he knew, he understood Lubbock. He knows what works there. He understands the strengths and the weaknesses. And he had a plan for how he's going to approach it from a recruiting standpoint, from a building the program standpoint, from a cultural standpoint. And it, he just was the perfect fit for us. And so, you know, we, we recognize that it was a risky higher because he has not been a, a college head coach before um, but it, he just he got it he understood it and he's the right fit and I so far so good I mean we're seeing that everything he told us he was going to do he's done he's sticking to the program you know as they faced adversity we you know our quarterback broke his collarbone the very first game we've had all kinds of different injuries we've had he makes no excuses he just you know what's next is what he always says and that's what he has the players saying and they're all buying into it. And so, you know, we can see the trajectory on, we can see the path forward and we're thrilled with the hire. So I, I think it was, I think we made the right decision. You know, he did. go ahead, JD. Oh, I was about to say, I know one other thing that also has been a huge emphasis at Texas tech is on of similar coaches. And he has such a wealth of Texas high school coaches or former Texas high school coaches who are on that staff. And then, of course, his offensive coordinators at Kitley, who did wonders with the air raid offense out in Western Kentucky with uh, Texas products like Bailey Zappi. And he's now coordinating that offense at Texas Tech. How much of that vision did Joey McGuire pitch to you all when he was talking about what he wanted to see at Texas Tech? Yeah, he had a full plan for his assistants. And he was going to bring in um, not just the type of person, but actual, you know, individuals he was going to target and they all fit with that same mindset it's you know a blue collar you know person that wants to dig in and wants to develop relationships with players and wants to make them better as athletes and as better as people and so that's that's what he insisted upon um you know but he's he's a culture guy and so it was important that he gets the really strong um you know scheme guys with him and i think he he got that with kitley and with DeRoyter, his d coordinator so I, I was pleased with the decisions we made. And, you know, initially he hired Sonny Cumbie as his coordinator, and then Sonny went and got the job at, at Louisiana Tech. So then we regrouped and, and um, you know, started looking for, for another replacement. But I, I think that Kitley is a great choice. He's a brilliant guy. Um, reminds me a lot of Cliff Kingsbury. Um, and, I, you know, obviously worked with Cliff for several years. So 
Um, you know, I think that we're in really good hands offensively. We just have to get some players to grow up a little bit and develop. And um, But we have a lot of talent there. We just got to get them going and get them in the program a little longer. And then on defense, you know, we've seen significant improvement year over year just, you know, in the time that they've been there. I mean, our defense is, is pretty good. And so, um, you know, really happy with what Reuters doing. So I think they have a great staff and, uh, you know, I'm pleased with what they're doing. I know you're a busy man with a busy schedule, and I want to make sure that we're obviously honoring the time that you've got with us. And if you're good for a couple questions, uh, I would love to talk for a moment about the Matador Club and the uh, stuff that you've done to find found there. Sure. That's obviously Texas Tech's NIL Collective. It's an organization that you helped create. Could you elaborate a little bit more on what an NIL collective is and how yours impacts the athletes at Texas Tech? So, you know, NIL, so NIL money is right now coming from two places it's one place it's coming from is from i think what it was originally intended which is like you know a, a business a local business say a local restaurant or a car dealership or something wants a player to do a commercial forum or a, a social media post form or whatever and they pay that player to use their name image and likeness to promote their business and so there's a lot of that going on at texas tech and other places but the other thing that has emerged has been these collectives where essentially boosters come together they pool their money and then they contract with the players and pay the players whatever they pay them and so, um, you know, we saw this stuff start to develop. We started seeing collectives uh, be formed, and it's been the absolute wild west. Um, people are doing it in all different kinds of ways. A lot of them are not following the rules. And so what we decided is we wanted to form a collective that is run like a business. You know, we're going to run it like we run our other businesses. Um, and we're going to follow the rules. We're going to do things the right way. And we're going to have some clear long-term objectives with what we're doing. We're not just going to form a collective so we can go out and target some high-profile recruits or transfers or whatever. We're going to build a collective that is focused on building the team and the whole team because football is a team sport. You know, you can bring in the best quarterback you want to bring in, but if you don't have a good offensive line, he's not going to be very effective. And so we want to, we want to have a full roster. And we want the guy that's, you know, the redshirt freshman or freshman offensive lineman who's redshirting right now, working out in the weight room. We want him to know that he's supported and that he's important in the long-term health of our program. And, you know, so we want to put money in his pocket. And so that's what we have, that's what we did. So we collected money and um, we have entered into contracts with 105 um, football players, um, including that, that includes 20 walk-ons and um, you know, we're paying them all $25,000 a year in uh, month installments. And so, you know, it, it's gone very well. You know, I, I think what we've seen is a much stronger locker room this season than other programs who have focused on just paying individual players large sums of money. That hasn't worked as well. Um, and I think we're building the program for the long run. The thing that surprised me a little bit at Tech, I, I hope this would be the case, but it surprised me a little bit at Texas Tech, is just how passionate our fan base is. We have, a, you know, we have 300,000 living alumni or a little bit over that that are relatively affluent, and they are all very generous. And so we've had no trouble raising money. Um, and so I expect that our payouts will go up quite a bit next year. And we've been able to reach out. You know, I've done some things with men's basketball. We just did a deal with the entire women's softball program. Each one of them is getting $10,000 a year. Um, we're working on soccer, women's soccer right now, um, track as well. So I think that um, in baseball. And so, I, you know, ultimately the goal is to have every single student athlete at Texas Tech with a, an NIL contract with the Matador Club. And uh, I think that's going to happen. Um, you know, key to all this is that we do follow the rules, and we've been very disciplined about that. It can't be used as a direct recruiting tool. You can't go out and make promises to players. We haven't done any of that, and we're not going to. Until they get on campus, we're not going to sign them. We're not going to make them any promises. It has to be totally separate from the university. Um, and so, you know, that's been clear from the, from the get-go. And so we've, we've organized it ourselves, set up uh, our own 501c3 Texas Corporation, nonprofit corporation, um, and then thirdly, there has to be an exchange of value. So the players have to do work for the money that they're given. And so in our case, these players um, do charity appearances and charity work throughout the Lubbock community um, and help out there. They also do appearances for the Matador Club. And so far, so good. We've actually followed through with the charity events. We've done several of them with the players. Um, and they've been a huge benefit to the local charities in, in uh, raising awareness and um, you know, getting people to be interested in them. So it's been a real benefit to the community and also to the kids getting the players getting more connected to the community. And so I, overall, I think it's been a great success. And hopefully we can serve as a, an example for how NIL can be a good thing. And that was our goal. And I think we're achieving that.
Absolutely. And now, you know, given the game that we've got this coming week with the West Texas Championship, TCU and Texas Tech, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the cactus emoji drama that came off uh, earlier this season. You know, when some TCU coaches took some shots on social media saying that you couldn't build a brand in the desert, but it's become a thing for Texas Tech fans to rally around that cactus emoji on social media. What's been your reaction to that original prompt? I thought it was pretty fun and pretty funny. You know, I think that somebody sent like 42 cactuses to the TCU football office one day. Um, I, I thought that was hilarious. Um, I just think it's great. It just shows the passion of the Texas Tech fan base. People love Texas Tech and um, love to get excited about Texas Tech and whenever it comes up, whenever there's opportunity. So it just shows the potential that our program has, you know, and we've seen it in men's basketball. We have a great game day atmosphere. It is, you know, um, raucous and loud and fun. And, you know, we used to see it, um, you know, 10 or 12 years ago in football. And so the potential and the ceiling for our program is extremely high just because we do have all that passion and support. And so, you know, the goal here now is just to do whatever we can do to, to win football games and give people a reason to be excited because we know once they have that reason, they'll go absolutely nuts. And uh, we can't wait for that to happen. We've mentioned some of the important people at Texas Tech who make this reality happen for these young athletes. I'm very fascinated with this relationship that you have with John Sellers. You went to high school with him at Canyon High. You played football with him on the Red Raiders squads. You founded Double Eagle with him, and you continue to have a very important business relationship with him to this day. Why has Mr. Sellers continued to be a significant part in your life, and what is your relationship like with him today? Well, we've actually known each other since junior high, and we've known each other since we were 12. And, um, you know, he's like a brother to me. And, um, you know, we complement each other from a strength and weakness standpoint. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success because we trust each other and love each other and we take care of one another. And, um, you know, it's I'm, I'm just very thankful to have the, a friendship and a relationship and a partnership with somebody like that. Not many people get that in their lives. So um, it's just been an awesome deal and a great ride. And, um, we've gotten lucky, but I think that a lot of what, um, you know, a lot of our success just really is, it emanates from our, our friendship and our trust that we have with one another. You're a fourth generation Red Raider. Your great grandfather was one of the first ever graduates in the twenties. I'm sure it has to be a big legacy for you to follow in. How has the weight of your family name impacted the work that you do now? Yeah. So I, I grew up a tech fan and, you know, uh, my great granddad was on the first football team there. My dad played football there in the seventies. Uh, my dad, my brother played baseball there. Um, you know, and, and both my parents went to school there. My wife met my wife at tech. Both of her parents went there. Her grandfather played at Texas tech. Um, yeah, I mean, we are a Texas tech family and I have four kids now, so hopefully, you know, they'll make the right choice and I might force them to do so. But, um, you know, it, it's all about just love for that place and everything it's done for me and my family. And, you know, just, the places it's taken us and the people we know and all my closest friends or people that I met there, you know, and all my family loves the place. And so I I just want to do everything I can to help out and make it better and make it great, make it what I know it can be. And so I spend a little bit of time, sometimes a lot of time every day, um, doing what I can to, to help. And, um, and so hopefully we can kind of keep things going and, and I plan to stay involved as long as I can. Cody, we're nearly to that third minute marker. So I do want to ask, what does the future look like for Texas Tech and that campus in Lubbock? I think the future is very bright. I mean, things are are strong in the state of Texas. There's so much growth. You know, Texas Tech has to step up and meet the call and and educate the the population of Texas. And so I think you're going to continue to see student population grow. It's over 41,000 now. Um, You know, the Permian Basin being out there, the world's largest oil field now helps a whole lot in terms of funding and raising money and everything. And so I think there's a lot of momentum, a lot of great things going on. We have great leadership now, great chancellor, great president. The board is really good and really functional. So I think there, there are a lot of reasons to be very optimistic. And, you know, from a football standpoint, I couldn't be any more excited about what's going on, what we're doing recruiting, what Coach McGuire is doing. And I think there are great things ahead. There's no question. So as we kind of wrap up, for those who want to follow the work you're doing for Texas Tech, what's the best way They can follow the projects that you've been working on and developing and and some of these things you've been talking about over this discussion. Um, You know, that's a great question. We obviously have the the matadorclub.org, which is our NIL collective. Um, And then just the, and then then Lubbock journal does a great job of, of keeping track of things. I saw Don Williams on here earlier, known that guy forever. 
Um, so they do a great job reporting on it. Obviously, Chris Level and the guys at Red Raider Sports uh, on our, our rivals site do a great job of covering the um, covering tech. And so I think those are the, the primary outlets for it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Regent Campbell. That was a, this has been a really interesting conversation and insight into, into the role in all of this. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, guys. I've enjoyed talking with you and um, happy to come back anytime. Absolutely. Well, have a great day and good luck, Tech, this weekend with TCU. That's going to be a good game. I think just, you know, I could say that objectively. You don't have to have a stake in it to think that, you know, rivalry games, you got, you know, a team that's hoping to go spoil an undefeated rival. It's going to be exciting. Can't wait. Yeah, for sure. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Thank you. That's all we have for today. My name is Bob Akhairi. I was joined by my co-host, J.D. Moore. We were talking with Cody Campbell, regent, former offensive lineman and donor of Texas Tech University. It was a good conversation. We enjoyed having you join us. Now, I'm going to hang up and listen.